Yo, Daniel here. Even though I'm from Ukraine myself, I don't actively follow the Ukrainian news these days, mostly out of concerns for my sanity. I have to stay a functioning adult to keep up with my studies, my job, take care of my little brother who fled the war, and to make videos for you guys every once in a while. So I only get updates in two ways. First, from my friends and family. Like my grandma's daily reports on how many explosions she heard, or my mom telling me how she was woken up early by yet another missile hitting the power grid in Kyiv, or my dad sending me this picture taken from their apartment. The second source of my info is coverage by people like Adam Something, Dylan Burns and Wash. These guys are actual comrades and they are good for my mental health. Unfortunately, not every lefty has a fully functioning brain like they do. For some of us, understanding foreign policy ends at watching a hundred YouTube videos describing how bad America is, and then feeling sophisticated each time you say military-industrial complex. And I'm not even talking about the subhuman bio-waste that is tankies, I'm talking actual leftists. The first culprits are people from the Majority Report, a show created by the original left-wing debate bro, Daddy Sam Cedar. Let us condemn their shit-ass arguments. Hello, Biden. It's Zelensky. We need 5 billion rockets. New wave libertarian communists, what do you think about the International DSA Committee slash Madison DSA drawing controversy for saying we should urge our legislatures not to send more aid to Ukraine that will prolong bloodshed and enrich the U.S. military industrial complex? They have since deleted the tweets after strong pushback. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I disagree with, with the criticism of that. I think that I, that is a valid, dis valid point and should be I, discussed more. <laughs> for those who missed it, let me tell you what just happened. So DSA, a left-wing organization whose foreign policy platform is basically just America bad, apparently tweeted that we should urge legislators to stop sending aid to Ukraine because it will prolong the conflict and enrich the military-industrial complex. And for this was rightfully shed upon by non-brain-dead leftists. But when this same statement is presented with context to Majority Report hosts, Matt Leach, of course, immediately agrees, and Emma calls it a valid point that is worth discussing. It is not, in fact, a valid point, and it is not worth discussing, Emma. Ukraine is defending against an invasion from a rogue terrorist state. Yes, withdrawing aid will probably end the war sooner, with Russia being the victor, who has been humiliated for over 8 months now and will then have full control over a territory of people it has been painting as subhuman Nazis for 8 years. You can imagine what that would lead to. Or you can just google Russia-Ukraine war mass graves if you don't like idealism. Putin doesn't want diplomacy right now because he's a bitter egomaniac, but if Ukraine was to lose international support and become weaker, he would gladly negotiate the terms of our complete surrender. Fuck you, Emma, and fuck you, Matt. Hello, Zelensky. It's Biden. We very, at the very least need some kind of tracking of these weapons because they're not even only ended up ending up in Ukraine. But yeah. like much less, like they're, like, they're, like they're just going to warlords as people do. Blood. Yes, you can track. You're giving them directly to the Ukrainian military, which uses them as they see fit as they're trying to win the war. Are you expecting Ukraine to create a giant bureaucratic system to give you daily reports of where each rifle is used and about each bullet fired? Fuck you. How about you shut the fuck up and let Ukrainians fight their war of survival? And what warlords, you fucking buffoon? Every soldier in Ukraine, even in the numerous volunteer battalions, works with the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, because they literally have no choice. They're not just given weapons and led to their own business, otherwise they would be chaos and we would have already lost the war. I think this dude mistakes the Ukrainian military for the Donbass separatists, who were indeed given weapons by Russia with no accountability which led to them forming lawless mafia states and doing stuff like blowing up the Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 with a missile given them by Russia. So that was a stupid fucking point. And this guy apparently is a leftist author who was on Majority Report to promote his book. 
That's leftist intelligentsia for you guys. I guess we're fucked. Hello, Donetsk children. It's five billion rockets. I mean, and, and at the same time, like Zelensky is now saying that he's not going to negotiate for peace or like look into that. And not acceptable. I'm sorry. People get pissed at me for this, um, for my position on this. But I'm sorry. That is that, from his okay, perspective. From, I understand it. Of from course, a, from a position of rhetoric or whatever. Like, sure. But as the, the official position behind the scenes is what's motivating our actions, it's not acceptable and it's wrong. All right. As for the Zelensky's reckless refusal to negotiate, here's some important context. Ukraine has attempted to negotiate seven times before the 7th of April when Boris Johnson heard Putin's fifis during his visit to Kiev. And three days later, Putin came out with a statement that talks with Ukraine had turned into a dead end. So Putin was the one who put a stop to negotiations. Before April, Russia only agreed to open humanitarian corridors for evacuating civilians, which didn't stop them from bombing the Kramatorsk railway station where between a thousand and four thousand civilians were awaiting evacuation on the 8th of April just one day from Boris Johnson being a meanie to Putin. 60 civilians, including 7 children, were killed and 110 were injured. Very cool. And after Putin got triggered by Johnson, Ukraine was still trying to negotiate, but Russia just kept increasing the demands. First it was just Crimea, then Donbass, and then according to Russia's foreign minister Lavrov, even Donbass wasn't enough for Russia. And only after Putin announced the annexation of four more regions in addition to Crimea, Zelensky decided there was no reasoning with that guy. But this doesn't mean that Ukraine doesn't want peace. In fact, Russia has had the means to reach peace all along. Just withdraw the fucking army, idiot. It's that easy. It's Donetsk. We need Biden. Hello. If the United States is going to play this role in arming Ukraine, we have to be involved in diplomatic talks for peace. That's what we have power over. Like, we're, we're, Would Ukraine be okay without our material support? So we have a say yeah. in the outcome here. It's not We don't just defer to Zelensky. He's not the president of this now. First, let me assure you that Zelensky is still, in fact, the president of Ukraine. Now, let's counter this bullshit. One. The United States is not the only country that is giving aid to Ukraine. In fact, over 70 different sovereign nations are doing that. So now, how do we determine how much say each of these countries get in determining the fate of Ukraine? I have an easy answer. You don't. The only people who should get the say are the Ukrainian citizens. Period. So let me get this straight. Western nations made sure we cannot defend ourselves from Russia by pressuring us into giving our nukes to Russia in exchange for, um, let me check, for nothing. We got a pat on the back and a useless, non-legally binding memorandum that has been broken for eight years now. Then, Western nations continued doing fuck all when Russia kept brutalizing its neighbors, including us since 2014. And now that Russia is doing its first mobilization since World War II just to kill more Ukrainians, we have American lefties over here deliberating on how much land they would give away to appease Putin. For now. Because that's exactly what it is. The US fucked this up. And throwing military aid at the problem doesn't mean it can now treat Ukraine as a puppet state and can tell Ukrainian people which stolen land they can take back and which they can't. Fuck off. I can't believe I'm hearing this from these supposedly egalitarian lefties and not some insane neocons. 2. Ukrainian people aren't willing to give any land to the invading force, and so isn't Zelensky, since he represents the Ukrainian people. If Zelensky was to go against the will of the public, no matter how popular he is right now, there's a good chance he would be replaced by some far-right politician who would capitalize on people's frustrations and on the sky-high level of nationalism caused by the war. If you don't want Ukraine to actually go as far-right as Russian propaganda likes to portray us, you don't want to capitulate to the audacious demands of the invader. The only thing that the West should be doing right now, if it wants peace, is providing the maximum support so it can strengthen Ukraine in case an actual peace negotiation takes place. 
or just to make us an even worse target for Russia and to further deter Russians from joining the war effort. Hello, bomb. It's bomb. Slava Ukraine. But the problem with us having a say in that outcome is that the people in power don't like really feel like there is any urgency to end the conflict. No, of course not. What the fuck do you mean? How are these people in power supposed to end the conflict? They can only try and influence Ukraine, and Ukraine isn't the one who's invading. So once again, what the fuck do these people mean? They can only mean Ukraine surrender, and the answer to that is a big fat no. Hello, Ukraine. We need five million children. Why? But then also when we go, if, if we go strictly by like what he, we here in the U.S. decide is enough, I mean, isn't that us deciding this too for the people of Ukraine? Like, I'm, I don't care about but, the Ukrainian but Binder, government. But let's make it people. concrete. Like, what if they say, okay, we want Crimea back? Yeah, do we just I, I continue? Like, I, no, I'm saying I don't, I don't support that. I'm saying I don't think that is something that I think we should risk world war and, with an, and a nuclear exchange for. I'm thinking, like, I don't think that, like, I don't support that. I, I draw a line there. The thing is, Crimea belongs to Ukraine. And I don't give a fuck about what some American podcaster thinks about that. Crimea was recognized as part of Ukraine by every nation, including Russia, up until the point when they decided to unlawfully annex it as part of retaliation for us leaving their sphere of influence. Most Ukrainians want Ukraine to recover all its territory, and they should be the ones to decide whether to go for it or not. Not some armchair general who never gave a fuck about Ukraine before 2022, and apparently still doesn't. To contrast all this bullshit, this is what Sam Cedar said in a video discussing whether the US should be leveraging its support to force peace at the expense of Ukraine. It's very complicated, but I, I think there is no world in which we should be funding a war without an expectation that there is at least legitimate attempts to negotiate. And... Um, Frankly, my sense is there's not a partner for negotiations on the other side. You know. uh, there's been no indications <laughs> so. that Putin's willing to do that. But mm -hmm. it, I, I think it is uh, important that we continue to encourage it, at least, if we're going to give money. This is what a good take sounds like. Reasonable, without any mental gymnastics, and easy to understand. Anyway, that's enough embarrassment from the majority report. Props to Matt Bin Laden for his pushback, however light it was. Can you really do that via executive action? Uh, I can do that via uh, super Islamo action. Now let's give some attention to Hassan, who is famous among us Ukrainians, for saying stuff like this. Britain Russia annexing its own fucking territory full of its own fucking people. I don't give a fuck about the Ukrainian constitution. I don't give a fuck about the Ukrainian border sovereignty. You feeling bad about the Crimean annexation does not change the reality of the Crimean annexation being a completely justifiable fucking act. He has since become much better and now supports Ukraine, but Hassan is still a dumbass. So after brave Ukrainian super soldiers blew up the Crimean bridge and Russia retaliated by a mass shelling of Ukrainian cities, Hassan decided it's necessary to play both sides. This is straight up terrorism. When Putin says, oh, well, you know, what goes around comes around, you shouldn't have uh, blew up our bridge. And I saw plenty of people saying, well, that's technically infrastructure. It's valid to blow that up. Ultimately, it goes back to who struck the first blow. And the country that struck the b first blow is still Vladimir Putin. It's still Russia. State-sponsored terrorism in the form of state war, military action, started when Vladimir Putin decided to invade Ukraine. What Ukraine did in blowing up the Crimean bridge was also a ridiculous act of war. I don't care if you get mad at me for saying this, blowing up civilian infrastructure that civilians utilize because military equipment passed through it. The bridge was used for Russian military sources. I know there are a lot of civilian targets and civilian infrastructure that oftentimes are, are, are valid targets. There's rules to war. I think what Russia did in Western Ukraine is worse than what Ukraine did in Crimea. But I still think that what Ukraine did in Crimea is uh, uh, bad. I can't sit here and fucking act like, uh, you know, uh, bombing civilian Before. targets and civilian infrastructure is uh, ultimately a good thing and justifiable. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's crazy. 
They hit civilian infrastructure to say, hey, you hit our civilian infrastructure. We're going to hit your civilian infrastructure even worse. That's what they did. At first glance, a bridge might seem the same as a house because both can be used by civilians and therefore bombing both of them is bad and is basically terrorism. But once you pull your head out of your own ass, you realize a house cannot be used as a logistical route to supply the entire southern front of Russia's invasion, while a bridge from Russia to Crimea certainly can be. Which is why it was blown up at 6 in the morning during low traffic, by the way. And now Ukraine has a good chance of retaking her son. So to even imply that it was an act of terror is laughable. Do you know what is actual terrorism? Responding to the destruction of a legitimate military target by air striking a residential building in Zaporizhia, killing 13 people, and then launching another 83 missiles and 17 suicide drones at Ukraine, resulting in at least 20 more dead civilians. Putin himself said this was revenge for the bridge, so I'm not making up the motivation. Retaliatory slaughter of civilians in response to a country trying to defend itself is terrorism. This is what's actually bad and a ridiculous act of war. Not the bombing of a bridge that was built by occupiers to colonize the newly conquered territory. And just in case, political assassinations aren't terrorism either. I don't care if you disagree, car bombing a specific state-employed propagandist who defended war crimes isn't even close to shelling literal children's playgrounds as part of some sick revenge. What a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. It's being stated all along that Moscow seeks nothing less than Ukraine's unconditional capitulation. For the record, this is exactly the same shit that uh, this is in the same line as like uh, Zelensky also saying it. Both sides are getting uh, uh, trying to harden their their uh, stance and, and trying to escalate rather than try to de-escalate. If Ukraine said tomorrow, we're no longer going to fight, let's do a peace treaty. There is no guarantee that Russia would fucking stop. But if Russia says, yes, tomorrow we're actually stopping this, we're actually stopping the war, let's do a peace treaty. Ukraine has to fucking uh, uh, capitulate to that. They have to. They have less power overall in this circumstance, regardless of the military victories that they've made in the Eastern Front. They have to. I think the United States even has more of a say in the actions of Ukraine, because without NATO weapons, Ukraine would not be able to put up a strong front. Anyway, I don't want to go hard on Hassan, because he does have good intentions, at least now. But Hassan should really leave his weird criticism proof bubble and start talking to some people with better analysis like Dylan Burns or even Wash. Wash my ass. Ukraina, Ukraina, snowu do nas poperlacia mskalnya. Here's another person I used to be a big fan of, Kyle Kulinski. I'm gay. His takes on Ukraine were ultra cringe when it all started, but then he talked to Wash. Thank you, Wash. Which made Kyle change his ways, but not quite enough, it seems. On his recent podcast, he laid out a genius plan to stop the war. So the first thing, the four regions in eastern Ukraine. So it's not Russia's, but it's, they're going to become independent countries with UN peacekeepers. The second thing is Crimea. It's gone. I, I, I hate to say it, but it's been gone for eight years. But then we get to Ukraine agrees, no joining NATO. So no, no NATO in Ukraine, mm -hmm. Crimea officially Russian. The eastern portions of the country are not going to be Russian. They're going to be independent countries with UN uh, peacekeepers. And then what you need, of course, is Joe Biden to endorse the plan. Just admit Crimea is Russian, since they annexed it too long ago, and also have four other regions form a buffer state between Russia and Ukraine, Oh, and also have Ukraine promise that it will never try to join any defensive alliance such as NATO. Great solution, Kyle. You're so smart. No one is going to agree to it. Not in Ukraine, nor even in Russia, since they already held the fake referendums and the pompous ceremony where Putin signed the annexation papers. Secondly, why the fuck is Russia getting everything? What do we get? 
We are winning the war after all. So what, just because you are afraid that Putin might drop a nuke, we are supposed to stop making advances and just let them massacre and rape us? No, fuck you. I thought about it long and hard. What a stupid fucking idea. And how embarrassing it is that he apparently put a lot of effort into it. Fuck. I'm gonna shove my dick in a waffle iron. Oh, and there's also Crystal Ball, a known coddler of fascists. She was very aggressive with the idea that the US should leverage their military aid to force Ukraine to capitulate to Putin. And the curveball at the end is that <laughs> I think you should actually allow Ukrainians to vote on it before you actually move forward and propose it. Because, and, and here's my reasoning for that, they were illegally invaded. So when they say like, no, we're going to defend our own country and we're not going to give an inch away, yeah. I'm sympathetic to that. So if the Ukrainian people say, if a majority of the Ukrainian people say, no, fuck off, I'm, like we're going to keep fighting. All right, there's really nothing I could do in that scenario as well, an outsider. I don't agree with that. And here's why. Because the only reason that they are where they are in this war is because of us. So the idea that we don't get a say, well, I think, I just don't think that's true. In fact, I think the reason that the war has taken the trajectory that it's taken in large part, and I do view this as a proxy war, is because the U.S. government's policy has been, we don't want this war to end. We want this war to continue. We want to weaken Russia. You can say, okay, they can have a vote and it's really up to them. But then there's still a decision for us. Are we going to continue to ship them arms? Are we going to continue to support them in the war effort? Because without us doing that, they're kind of dead in the water. Okay, so I was going to address that. Yeah. And the answer is, when Biden endorses the plan, that's a wink and a nod of like, look, if you guys don't take this, that's on you. Like, you're sort of on your own now. Yeah. You've already given them 50 to $80 billion worth of weapons. I mean, I would have stopped after like three packages. We're on package what? 17 or some shit like that. Biden loves to pretend like, oh, it's this is just on the Ukrainians and we're just going to do whatever they want. Bullshit. OK, yeah, we have sway. We, not just sway. We're determinative. Like they don't get to this place anywhere close to it without our arms, economic support, intelligence, training over your like none of it. And again, that is not to diminish their efforts and their losses and their courage and all of that. But it's just to be real, like they're nowhere in this war without our support. So, yeah, you know, if you have the if you say, OK, you vote on it. And if you guys say no, then all right, we're out. That means effectively more you're likely say, to take it. Well, not only that, but I mean, that means effectively if they did vote against it, you're Russia is winning that war. Uh, listen, I totally understand the Ukrainian perspective and it's absolutely just it's just their interest and our interests, and more importantly, the interests of the globe, are not 100% aligned. And, uh, and in my view, I care a lot more about the interests of the globe in avoiding nuclear war than I do about Ukrainian territorial integrity. This is an even stupider idea than Kyle's, and you don't have to be a Mensa member to understand why. If Russia finds out that the West told Ukraine, negotiate peace or you're on your own, Russia will be the only one in control of the negotiations. Putin will be able to ask for whatever he wants, since he will know that Ukraine has no other choice. Yeah, not exactly ideal. Crystal is a good example of why just being anti-establishment isn't enough. You also have to stand for something and well, be intelligent at least. Bayraktar. Alright, I think that's enough criticism of lefty influencers. Let's criticize the broader West a bit. And I do appreciate all the Western support, but here are some questions. Why did you have to wait so long before giving us high Mars and proper anti-air defense? Why have you not cut the economic ties with Russia in the eight years you had since 2014 and now pretending this is such an unexpected crisis? If you want Russians to overthrow Putin's dictatorship, which seems to be the only good way out at this point, why have you not given them the assurances to help them rebuild the country and to protect the ones who oppose the regime in case they succeed? Like seriously, why do you think Russians will risk their lives to overthrow their dictator just to be immediately persecuted by the West exactly like Putin says they will be? I'm not looking for some cynical, pragmatic answers. I'm just expressing my frustrations as somebody who can easily lose his family to a Russian missile today, tomorrow, or the day after. 
I appreciate you watching up to this point. A huge thanks goes to Adam Something, Wash, Dylan Burns, and even Destiny, who was consistently arguing on the good side of history. A huge fuck you goes to the fake leftists who sided with Russia, and to all the lefty video essayists who decided it is very important to make hours of videos shitting on debate streamers they don't like, but there is no need to speak against Russia's invasion that has killed thousands and displaced millions of innocent people. If you think the video was worth your time, you can help it reach a bigger audience by liking it, writing a comment, or even pressing the sub button under it. Slava Ukraini!